Batted up customs. Back row 10. All up in the shop. Ooh, yeah. Let's see what's going on. Let's see if this thing's looking all right. Green, old box Chevy. Talking eights. Just finished the alignment. On the front. Look, y'all. You see that clearance? And that rear end goes straight up, straight down. Uh, Anti-roll is on a perfect, what do you call it? 90 degree angle. The height is killer on the back. It could go a little lower. We got the front. I got it aligned. Got a nice little height to it. Never mind, it's on the alignment plates. But like I said, the alignment plate is just there. So that way when you let the car down, the car. The car will bite the ground. So that way the tires set the suspension exactly where it needs to sit. So boom. Straight up and down with the level, old school. Put a piece of tube on there. With the level on the tube, it tells me if the wheel's plumb. Boom, wheel's plumb. I degree the spindles. So I measure from the plate to the tie rod area of the spindle. And whatever number I want, these are at, what I put these at, 14 and 5 eighths. So the spindle is degreed back. That's why with big rim cars, to get as much turning out of the front, and like box Chevys, whatever. No cut to the fender. So, laser alignment machines do not work. They do, but they don't. The laser alignment machine is gonna come off the back wheel, and it's, you, it's gonna have uh, stock specs from like the factory and a, a computer, however the computer works with the light laser. Well, you can't do that. When I just read the spindles back, the top of the spindle goes back more than the bottom of the spindle, called degree. Gives you a sport steering, and it keeps you from cutting the fender. But I've been doing this shit longer than anybody on these big wheel cars. You guys out there slapping eights on box Chevys, clean ass box Chevys, slapping them eights on there and cutting the fenders and moving the chrome and cutting the back of the car in front of the back wheel. Come on, man. The eights go right on these cars with just a little bit of alignment, custom alignment in the front. You just got a big block in it. See? Shimming. Then you got the two ways that you can put the shaft, which changes it about a quarter inch, which I could turn the shaft the opposite way and have less shims in it, but I weld the bolt in on the outside of the frame right there so the, the bolt cannot move, cannot wiggle, cannot allow any movement to where it would loosen up the bolt and knock the shims out. Cars back in the day that I did, there was some that I didn't weld them in and the bolt would flex or whatever right there and the, spindle, or the, the shims would pop out. Then they would have to bring it back to me this and that. Well, I ain't got that problem no more. Only on the cars that didn't get the bolts welded in. So here's what's going on now. This is getting picked up Sunday morning. The tow man for the dude that owns the car cannot get to it until then. The car has to be towed. I'll test that tomorrow. Uh, the car got some burnt plug wires and shit like that. So uh, the mechanic that did the motors got to figure all that out. It's not my dillo. So yeah, that's it for the green box Chevy. A couple more little, just little adjustments, which won't take me but an hour when I get back tomorrow. We have Sebastian's nine inch right here. We have yet to narrow it, which is fine. But as you can see, it's got the brace on it. It's got the little gusset braces in there. It's got the 11 hole brackets on there. It's got the coilover uh, mount bracket, blah, blah. This car was bolt in bolt-in coilovers well anybody knows me they know i cannot stand a bolt-in setup because bolt-in setups are bullshit you don't get as much adjustment and the right ride quality out of a bolt-in setup as you do 
a welding setup. So of course, the cross brace will go up there across. We still gotta cut the pipes out of the way because they're in the way, whatever. Cross brace will go up there, anti-roll will go up there, and the coil mounts will go up there, which I have a couple extra boxes of the coil mount kits here. They're like fucking 80, 90 bucks, whatever. So obviously that gets added to the tab. But another nine inch fabbed up, almost ready to go back in the car. And we're moving on, moving on, moving on. Still gotta hit this GN. The GN most likely will go up on here. Oh no, the 79, like I said, 79 uh, Cutlass is gonna go on this lift next. Probably even backwards, just like this one. So that way we can start knocking that thing out. The Navigator will be on that lift. So, uh, sorry, Joey, that I didn't get it on there today. Uh, I was running around again. And then when I got here, I had to deal with a whole bunch of stuff, so. But, anyways. We got this Firebird right here. Now, before all you get mad and things isn't it, he has been hitting me up for probably about five months. And you see what wheels going on. <laughs> It's gonna take a couple weeks though before I get into it. But I'm gonna order the axles because I gotta narrow it. I already measured all that out. I'm gonna narrow it uh, three inches, both sides in the back. Do a little bit of uh, fab work to the tubs, not mini tub it, but there's just a couple little things that are in the way. Add the wheel on there, wheel sticks out two inches. So narrow it three inches and do a little work. Trim the lip a little bit up on top and the wheel will be on. Front alignment, as you can see, is completely out of whack. So I'll take care of that, but like I said, this one's gonna be a couple weeks. All the cars are gonna get done before this car. So, but yeah, and once the navigator, navigator goes on a lift on the green car, is, the green car will be bye-bye Sunday, boom. The navigator is gonna go on that lift and then the LSMC, I'm gonna cut the tubs out of it. And yeah, you know, better up customs. Better up, better up. Share, 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 subscribe, watch, learn. I got all kinds of little things I can teach y'all. Uh, but yeah, I got a nice, nice squat on this bitch. Let's see if I can get another angle here. Oh. The back could go down another three inches without a problem. I'll probably set it down just a pinch more than that, but I think it looks good right where it's at. But y'all see it. I'll get another video of it outside. Go around it. I have my guy today, Andy. Uh, works for me, does some cleaning and a little bit of shit here and there. I had him wax it down today. So it ain't so damn dirty, which it does look way better than it did. Still got some streaks and shit in it, but. I don't have no good microfibers in a shop with metal shavings and stuff like that going on. You pick up a microfiber, if it ain't in a plastic container, that microfiber goes in the garbage. It, it don't go on no car. I don't care if the car is a dirty paint job like that. I'm not wiping, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna scratch shit. But yeah, all right, y'all. Another video, another day, more shit. I like how you, you guys like it. It's like a TV show. Every day you get to see whatever. Yeah, not a lot gets done to other things, but things are always getting taken care of. We're not a we're not a tire repair shop that takes cars in and this and that and blah blah blah. We're working on two, three, four cars at a time. So have fun with that one. And yeah, bedded up customs. Thank old Tim, crew, Scarface Mike. We out. Appreciate y'all.